Take okay, care. Okay, our, our uh, next speaker is um, <clears throat> is Christopher Parker. He's the executive director of the Vermont Rail Action Network. And uh, Chris, I don't know, do you have any Chris is live, ready to go. Okay, Chris is live. I'm live. Do and, you have uh, anything? Do you want me to show uh, what uh, we had sent each other and I can put that on my screen or how do you want to do this? I'm going to go without slides. And um, I will just tell you that I had a, a week of being really busy with the uh, work of advocacy and I just made a strategic decision that that was something I had to focus on. Um, not making slides. So here I am. Um, but I do have some things to say about uh, the Ethan Allen coming up to Vermont and about how the Vermont Rail Action Network went about the process of advocating for the train and pushing to make sure it happened. I think there's some lessons uh, to share. Um, but first, I just want to say I'm thrilled to be here. I'm really pleased to see you. I, I can't see everybody in my view, but I can see Bruce and I can see Gary. And um, it was nice to see Union Station in the background uh, for um, the, uh, the view for Jim Matthews there. I, I grew up in Washington, D.C. Uh, and it was nice to hear um, the name of Bill Hollister. Um, somebody that uh, we miss in Vermont, and as I'm sure you guys do. Um, he did a lot of good while he was uh, in his, his long service to Amtrak. Um, I also want to say this meeting has is really one of the most positive meetings I've been to in quite a while. Um, I just want to note that the talk I heard from Derek was perhaps one of the best talks I've ever heard from an Amtrak person in terms of um, specific strategies for uh, improving the network and um, and doing so in a way that actually seems like it is going to go somewhere and advance the needle. Not that we're going to get everything we ask for, but um, I'm really pleased with where Amtrak's at right now. And um, Derek is a great representative of it, and Luke as well. And um, uh, the things that I heard from Jim um, about where we are in the political picture in Washington, D.C., maybe the most positive in my entire life. So, you know, it's been a long year here, tucked away um, from COVID, but um, wow, we're in a good place right now in a lot of ways for trains. And um, so um, celebrate, right? Raise a glass, this is my tea. So um, just a little bit about me and the Vermont Rail Action Network. Um, we are the equivalent of ESPA over in Vermont. Uh, we support better train service, uh, freight service, as well as passenger service. And in the um, advocacy world of passenger trains, that's a little bit unique, although not totally. It gives us the advantage of having in the room two very different constituencies. Um, we like to joke that we have the hippies on one side of the room. That's all of us, I guess. I don't know. Um, the hippies and the uh, environmentalists on one side of the room, and on the other side of the room, we have the the business people, the shippers, the um, you know the freight people. Um, it's not quite so simple, but um, it's true that within one movement, we have very different um, perspectives, uh, incentives, um, needs, and that's worked for us. Um, I have been around Vermont Rail Action Network now since 2000 and seven and a few years before that, even under the auspices of um, National Association of Railroad Passengers and working with train riders Northeast in Maine. Um, and I've been executive director for a lot of that time. Uh, I stepped back in uh, 2016 and essentially took an extended um, family leave. Um, got a lot of experience um, in that department, but the board asked me to come back as executive director um, uh, some months before um, March of last year. And I figured, all right, it would be a little bit of a time and then I would look for some new leaders and um, get things in shape. But of course we just sort of hunkered down over the last year. Uh, and um, so I'm still here and I'll be here for a little bit, but I am, um, thinking about um, looking for a new role. So um, anyone who wants to hire me, let me know um, because I'm getting ready to think about that. <laughs> I see that, Gary. Um, 
My background, I started as a, a conductor uh, on Cape Cod, on the Cape Cod and Hyannis Railroad, which kind of dates me, and uh, ended up uh, on the Cape Cod Central Railroad later, as also as a conductor, but also as the marketing person there for a little bit of time. Um, I uh, have also done um, rail consulting, uh, including at one point working on I want to reach out and, and point to the screen. I was working on the study for the uh, Buffalo to Albany line uh, as one of the sub consultants um, doing an operations study um, where we, uh, we had a simulator and we measured the environmental impact and we measured the number of trains we could run, CSX willing and how fast we could make them. And it was a very interesting view in on your world. Um, and I also, um, in my life, have gone to seminary and learned about um, organizing and, and working with people. And so uh, my work at VRAN is kind of the combination of my rail background and my, um, uh, my organizing um, and um, people work. So here I am. Um, but first, in regards to the Ethan Allen, I want to look back to um, 2009. And uh, many of you will recall, if you were around then, that our governor at that point tried to save some money by proposing to eliminate the Ethan Allen, uh, which would have, of course, hurt Saratoga, New York as well, and, and um, the other stops in New York. Uh, this did not go over well with the people in Rutland and uh, didn't go over with rail advocates in Vermont. Uh, there had been a few years of um, uh, less advocacy, I think, um, in part because of kind of a loss that the advocates experienced with the Champlain Flyer Service, which is a whole separate con um, complicated story. Um, so anyway, Chris, Chris, Chris um, we do have to have a break in about nine or 10 minutes. So uh, if you could just get up more to the extension, because I know that's what people were specifically were interested in, because we do have to break by about 1250 to have a 10 minute break before Tim Kennedy. So Roger. OK. All right. So um, they proposed that the train was going to be cut. We pushed and said, no, actually, it should go and meet its full potential by going to Burlington. So um, that's what happened. The um, the focus of the state, not just the state government, but the state um, powers that be, uh, the political class, uh, moved in towards extending that train to Burlington. And there was some hope that we would land a pile of money to upgrade the tracks. That didn't happen. But instead, we got a series of grants. So the state paid attention. And every opportunity we had, we Put a little bit more money in and we are now in the position of having the tracks essentially upgraded all the way up to burlington ready for the train and of course if that's true how come the train isn't running right now so there are a couple of items that uh have uh, yet to be finished up when they're finished up the train will start to run and those are in uh, Middlebury, which is halfway between Rutland and um, Burlington. So halfway on the new section, Middlebury, home of Middlebury College, uh, is an interesting town. It has <clears throat> two streets that go over the uh, railroad tracks. And both of those bridges uh, were in need of replacement, prompting a question of how to do it because of new standards for um, double stack clearance and so forth. So there was some engineering and the upshot is that uh, B-Trans is building a tunnel underneath the town, replacing those two bridges and in a sense, making the tracks invisible. That'll be done at the end of this construction season. Then we have the question in Burlington of where to put the train. Um, there was a, a back and forth tussle and some different people trying to advance their own interests, but it has been settled on um, adding a few tracks in the Burlington rail yard. Um, that is not really a big project, but it will happen this summer. Um, and then we have the platforms 
uh, for the train in Middlebury and in Burlington. So in Burlington, there was a platform already, uh, but it was a platform that didn't meet ADA requirements. And so uh, last uh, November and December, Vermont Rail System took the track at the Burlington station and moved it. They're gonna put a bike path on one side of it and a new platform on the other side of it. They straightened out the tracks in order to create that area for a new platform. And um, that's again, a project that will be taking place this construction season. And the one in Middlebury will be taking place just as soon as the tunnel work is complete. The tunnel is going to create a grade going down underneath the center of town in Middlebury. And so that grade has to be built and then built alongside it afterwards is gonna be a new platform. Platform is gonna be on the uh, New York side of the tracks and um, it will be within walking distance of Middlebury College in the downtown. So um, there's a few other details uh, kind of put to some more ties and, and surfacing and um, things like that. All of that means that we have to get through this next construction season this summer. And uh, in the fall, as the construction season is finished up, um, and then there will be a period of qualifying crews and so forth. That'll take us into January 2022. Uh, and then there will be all the things that um, that they're, they um, didn't get to yet or running late, all the little details. So we're looking at the probably the first quarter of 2022, although um, FeeTrans, Vermont Agency of Transportation, isn't going to promise that. They're, um, they're just saying vaguely 2022. Once that's done, you'll have a train. It'll have a... Um, Probably a locomotive on either end, could have a cab car also, but um, there aren't that many cab cars and the cabbage cars don't fit into Penn Station. So at this point, it'll be a locomotive on either end. Uh, the reason for that is that the train comes up uh, past Albany, past Schenectady, Saratoga, uh, into Rutland. And when it gets to Rutland, the tracks curve around and aim towards the south, which means to get to Burlington, the train will just reverse direction and end up in Burlington. There is um, right in downtown Burlington no uh, Y or turning facilities, um, but that's not a problem if you have an engine on each end for Rutland. So the other thing to know about this is that they're talking about a revised schedule. And the driver of that revised schedule is that a lot of people have complained about the current schedule being different on different days. Um, I'm not totally convinced, but that's the feedback that the Agency of Transportation has. They want to create a schedule that is the same every day. Uh, and so what they're looking at, this is tentative at this point, so there is an opportunity to uh, intervene in the process. Uh, and Gary, I did forward your email to um, the Vermont Agency of Transportation regarding the schedule. Um, so they're looking at uh, a leaving time from Burlington around 7 a.m. ish, um, which puts you in Rutland about um, 9 ish, maybe 9 30. Um, so that's about an hour and a half or so later, maybe two hours later than um, the current schedule. Uh, and then, of course, that will be reflected in the times down to New York. That would mean arrival in New York around 3.30-ish, give or take, um, slotting into the Metro North slots, of course. Going north, they're looking at a leaving time around 11.45. And um, that would um, allow for, I think, a nine o'clock arrival in Burlington. Uh, I'm not so sure about this, and there may well be some political pushback from Rutland because there is a ski market, and um, I'm not sure this schedule works entirely for a weekend market in Vermont. Um, so we'll see what happens, but now is the time to, to intervene on that question. Um, so, of course, the train is uh, not running at the moment. It's um, canceled for COVID and um, 
that's our current work. Um, and there's there's two things we're doing. We are asking Vermonters to send uh, postcards and, and calls and emails to the governor, and that is happening um, and is being heard. Um, we are also rolling out uh, a coalition of other organizations to sign yes. on to a letter. Uh, and uh, so we're approaching 150 different organizations to sign on to a letter asking for the train to resume. Uh, and we have started to get uh, folks joining us. So I do see I have uh, not very much time, um, but maybe some time for a question or two or three. Uh, I'm gonna stop right here and, and let anybody jump in that, that wants to. Okay. Um... Yeah, we really need to take the break if we're going to Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, uh, there actually is a bunch of issues with this, Christopher, with the schedule and some of the other stuff. So, and some of our members, especially ones north of Albany have mentioned that. So maybe in about two weeks, 10 days to two weeks, we can schedule a separate meeting where, where those that are interested can uh, discuss that. And I can talk to you about that offline later because there's certainly some issues regarding the schedule there that affects not only Rutland, but also uh, some of the stations in, New York, in uh, New York State, north of Albany too, that there's some concerns on. So uh, maybe I'll reach out to you in a week and a half or two weeks. And like I said, there's some people that are on this meeting that uh, have some issues with the schedule and would just like, you know, to have the viewpoint known. So uh, we, can, we can meet offline with that, so. That sounds good. It's, okay. it's not something we've seriously engaged with. Yes. In Vermont. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'll follow up with you on that, and um, like I said, we'll uh, I'll schedule that in about ten days or two weeks, and I'll talk to you next week about that. So, thanks a lot, Christopher, for uh, uh, helping out with Vermont and uh, everything um, that's been done with the extension. That has been a 20, 20 plus year process to get that extension up there, and people in northern Vermont are, will be very happy once that is started next year. So, at this point, we'll have a ten minute break. Uh, then we will start at one o'clock with um, uh, states, New York State Senator Tim Kennedy, who's also the chairperson of the Senate's, uh, State Senate's Transportation Committee. So that'll start at exactly one o'clock. So we are on break for, um, for 10 minutes.